हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts Updates and Recent Exams. Part 1. You hear two people organizing a going away party for a mutual friend. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Hey Bruce, looks like we got some planning to do for Albert's going away party, right? There are certainly some things we have to talk about now. Yeah, that's better than doing everything at the last minute. Okay, so I can write some notes as we talk. Sure thing. So, when should we have the party? Hmm, he goes to Thailand on the 26th of August. Okay, let's have it on the 24th then. Yes, let me see. That's a Friday. That would be perfect. Now, where should we have it? at a bar or a club you know i think he would like something really intimate nothing too loud a restaurant would be good maybe the apple tree grill great place sounds good okay now we have to think about who to invite well his best friend from college sure and his cousins right oh yes his coworkers yeah okay his coworkers and his boss any other people how about his yoga classmates hmm he does love yoga But that might be too many people. I suppose so. I can email and text message the invitations. When should I send them? We should send them out soon, but not too early. How about the 16th of August then? Well, why not give it a few more days? The 13th? All right, I think that's a good time too. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Okay now, we have to think of a gift. Should we all get one? No, I was thinking we could all give money for the party and the gift, you know, something really nice. Yeah, that be better than getting him little things individually. I can ask for the money. Thanks for doing that. How much should we ask for? I think we should ask for maybe $15 each. Is that too much? No, not at all. He's going away for 2 years. That would give us about $150. That's a good amount. Yeah, well, I'm thinking we could get him something practical. Yes, especially since he's going abroad. Something he could use, something that's also portable. We could get him an article of clothing perhaps, or maybe even a pair of shoes. Hmm, shoes are nice, but they might wear out easily, especially where he's going. Maybe a book light? A what? Yeah, he loves to read and a book light would be very convenient when he travels. Okay, that's one good gift idea. Did you write that down? Yep. Now, we need to think about reservations at the restaurant. Well, we should get their big banquet room, yeah? Yes, definitely. Should we ask the restaurant to prepare a buffet? Isn't that expensive? No, I don't think it is. A buffet dinner sounds cheaper than everyone ordering individual meals. Definitely. How about drinks? They can buy drinks themselves or bring their own. Okay. Yeah, it would cost too much if we bought drinks ourselves. Certainly. We have to ask someone to bring an MP3 player. The restaurant has speakers and we can hook it up for music. Sounds good. Actually, there is one more thing that I thought we should do since Albert is leaving for such a long time. What were you thinking of? Maybe we could have a slideshow of all the fun times we've had. Hmm. That'll take a little bit of work, but I think it's a great idea. 
Actually, in the invitation, can you ask for some photos people have of him? Yeah, definitely. I can scan them or people can send me digital photos they have. All right. I'll tell them when I send out the invitations. Then I can make a little presentation. Ha, I can't wait to see his reaction. Yeah, especially that one picture where... That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. You will hear a speaker talking about saving energy in the home. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 12. Many thanks for inviting me along to talk about saving energy in the home. This is a key issue for many people who now find themselves on tight budgets. So today I'd like to spend a few minutes going through some simple tips to help keep those energy bills to a minimum. I'll start with some easy, cheap ideas before talking about more major solutions later. I think we're all aware of the importance of insulating our homes. And although I'd advise you to get it done, I appreciate it can sometimes be inconvenient to have building work carried out. And though they're growing in popularity, having solar panels installed on the roof isn't a cheap enough option for many of us to consider seriously. So what other steps can we take? Well, most people will make a point of turning the heating down when temperatures outside rise, but they ignore other equally useful ways of saving energy when they're making dinner or doing their weekly laundry. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 13 to 20. If you're living in a relatively new apartment or house, you're probably blessed with a cosy, draft-free living space. But for those of us in older properties, the chances are there are gaps all over the place where cold air is getting in. Walk around your home and place the back of your hand around window frames. Can you feel cold air coming in from outside? Get down on your knees at the doors. Is there a draft at floor level? Fix these drafts with some cheap draft excluders and savings in heating bills will begin straight away. And are you using the latest energy-saving light bulbs? I'm not recommending you go around your entire property throwing out older ones and replacing them all immediately. But next time a bulb goes, make sure you buy an energy-efficient alternative. And what about heating? If you have radiators in every room, do you need them all switched on throughout the day? If they're on timers, Set them efficiently. Then there's the laptop or your TV. Do you leave them switched on overnight or on standby? Don't waste money. Turn them off. And that goes for lights as well. You'd be surprised how many people leave them on when they go out. There are also guaranteed savings to be made in the kitchen. I'm always telling my husband not to overfill the kettle when he makes a cup of tea. Why boil more water than you actually need? When you consider how many times that kettle gets used every day, you'll appreciate just how much electricity can be saved by boiling what you need and no more. And the next time you're cooking pasta or potatoes, keep a lid on the pot. The water will boil much more quickly than if you leave it off. And if you've bought yourself a pressure cooker or steamer and it's sitting in the cupboard never being used, get it out. 
They're much more efficient than pots and pans. Now, the refrigerator and freezer. If the fridge is next to the cooker, it's having to work harder to stay cold. But as I'm giving cheap, easy solutions here, a kitchen redesign might be out of the question. Still, there are other energy-saving steps you can take. Keep an eye on the temperature control. We often forget to turn it down in the colder winter months when a high setting is unnecessary. Also, remember to defrost the freezer frequently and try not to overfill it, as this isn't the most efficient way of using it. The washing machine is another potential money saver. A lot of people wash at 40 degrees Celsius, but it's often okay to drop the temperature down to 30 degrees Celsius with similar results. And remember to either wash full loads or select the half load program. Again, a surprising number of people forget to do this. And is it really necessary to dry your clothes in a tumble dryer? If you have a garden or a yard, hang them outside. Or if you're drying them inside, get yourself a cheap clothes rail rather than hanging things over radiators, which robs you of valuable heat. Now, let's turn to some of the help our local council is offering to householders to save energy. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You are going to listen to a conversation between a tutor and two students. In the first part of the discussion, they talk about a fellow student. First, look at questions 21 to 23. Ah, Francis and Steve. Hi. Now, before we start the tutorial, am I right in thinking that you haven't heard about Lorraine? No. What about her? Um, she's already left. What? Well, she hasn't told anyone. You sound surprised. Weren't you half expecting it? Yes, but she could at least have told us, though. We've been on the course together for the past three years, and it would have been nice to know. She always was the sort to keep herself to herself. Yes, I know what you mean. Did she give any reason? Well, she got that job. What? Yes, and she's been given permission to leave, as there's only a week to go before the end of the course. But she'll be back for the exam week. Oh, well, we'll just have to catch her on the mobile after the class. She's gone back to Wales first. Oh, dear. We'll get hold of her on the mobile. She did say that it might not be possible to contact her for a couple of weeks. Oh, OK. If that is what she wants. Before the conversation continues, look at questions 24 to 30. Right, to work. We're here to look at your assessment marks for your coursework. I take it you haven't seen them yet? No. <laughs> Not yet. Well, you'll both be pleased. In fact, very pleased. Yes. Francis, you have come out with the top mark in the year. Oh. You have, in fact, got a starred first. Wow. Aren't you pleased, Francis? Yes, I'm... Just speechless. <laughs> and um, 
What about me? Well, Steve, you got a first as well. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> you might have done even better, but there were a few faults with the 5,000-word project you did on traffic management. And what about the book review we had to do? Yours was, I can safely say, the best we have ever had. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm not. In fact, you have won the departmental prize for the piece. <laughs> It's a pity, really, that your project wasn't of the same calibre. It's still not bad at all, though, is it? It certainly isn't. What do you think were the faults with your project? Uh, I just wasn't very happy with the conclusion, and I got myself in a bit of a twist with the argument about road pricing. By and large, your overall conclusions were OK, and I would say that your thoughts on road pricing were quite original. The problem was more with the actual end. It was a bit disappointing. You started off well, but then it ended rather suddenly, as if you got fed up with it. <laughs> yes, I did kind of stop fairly abruptly. I couldn't think of much to say, even though I knew it was important. Yes, that section needed a bit more work on it. But, as I said, by and large, it was very good. And, Francis... Mm -hmm. Your project was excellent. So much so that we think you should take it further and perhaps do a PhD or at least an MPhil. What do you think? Um, I hadn't really thought about it. I've just been concerned with getting through this final year and getting all the coursework and exams out of the way. I can understand that. But I do think that you ought to consider it seriously. If you perform as well in your exams as in your project work, you're on course for a first. Do you think that I'd get funding for it? Well, any grant will be discretionary, but you have as good a chance as anyone else. I'd even say a much better one. Mm. If you do get a first, it'll be the only one we've had in this department for three years. And I'd be happy to be your supervisor. Thanks. I'd like that. Do you think I should start applying for it now or wait until after the exams? I think you must really start thinking about it as soon as you can. Mm. And, Steve, what about you? Have you thought about going on to do research? I have thought about it, but I have a job lined up if I get a good degree. And, quite honestly, I am fed up with not having enough money to do the things I would like to do. <laughs> I can understand that. Is there anything that either of you would like to talk about? Yeah. I have a couple of things I'd like to ask, if you don't mind. OK. We have roughly uh, 20 minutes left. So, Steve, would you like to go first? Right. Um... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. In this section, you are going to hear a lecture. Please look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions 31 to 40. Urban and community forestry can make great differences in our lives. Each one of us can make a personal contribution. As we develop and apply technologies for a better way of life, oftentimes side effects adversely affect our natural environment. For example, in our urban areas, summer temperatures and noise levels are higher than in surrounding countryside. Air pollution problems are more concentrated and the landscape is significantly altered, reducing personal health benefits available to us by reducing access to wooded areas 
and green open spaces. Trees help solve these problems. Now, 75% of us live in cities and towns, and we can act individually to improve our natural environment through planting and care of trees on our own streets and by supporting community-wide forestry programmes. Through technology, we are learning more about trees and how they benefit mankind, and how we can do a better job of planting and caring for these trees that make up our urban forests. Trees are major capital assets in Australia's cities and towns, just as streets, sidewalks, sewers, public buildings and recreational facilities are part of a community's infrastructure so are publicly owned trees. Trees, and collectively the urban forest, are important assets that require care and maintenance, the same as other public property. Trees are on the job 24 hours every day, working for all of us to improve our environment and quality of life. Without trees, the city is a sterile landscape of concrete, brick, steel and asphalt. Picture your town without trees. Would it be a place where you would like to live? Trees make communities livable for people. Trees add beauty and create an environment beneficial to our mental health. Trees impact deeply on our mood and emotion, providing psychological benefits which are impossible to measure. A healthy forest growing in places where people live and work is an essential element of the health of the people themselves. A well-managed urban forest contributes to a sense of community pride and ownership. Trees and other plants make their own food from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, water, sunlight and a small amount of soil elements. In the process, they release oxygen for us to breathe. Trees remove gaseous pollutants by absorbing them through the pores in their leaf surface. Particulates are trapped and filtered by leaves, stems and twigs and washed to the ground by rainfall. Air pollutants injure trees by damaging their foliage and impairing the process of photosynthesis. They also weaken trees, making them more susceptible to other health problems, such as insects and diseases. The loss of trees in our urban areas not only intensifies the urban heat island effect from loss of shade and evaporation, but we also lose a principal absorber of carbon dioxide and trapper of other air pollutants as well. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking QCAT guesswork. Please guys participate in every day new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.IELTSUpdatesAndRecentExams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my Telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.